Good morning, and thanks for joining us for another episode of Beyond the Pink Cloud. This is your host, Dr. Alice Kirby. And today, for the first time ever, I have two guests. It's very exciting. Uh, I have with me today Kelly and Rudy Castro from Conscious Partnership. They are relationship alchemists. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a pleasure to have you both with me today. Thanks for coming on. Thank, Thank you. you so much for having us. We're really honored to, to be here and to spend this time connecting and sharing and serving. And it's what we love the most. So we we'll really appreciate the invitation yes. to be here. Very yes. grateful. Thank you. Definitely. I feel like right now with all the social distancing, being able to connect over things like this and have conversations and podcasts and connect over Zoom, it's, it's one of the, the real highlights of, of what's going on in this particular time that we have all this technology that can keep us connected. Absolutely. And we're seeing that in our kids with school and connecting to their friends. And, you know, we've been used to having a lot of connection this way because a lot of our work is virtual. We work with people from mm -hmm. all over, right? So, um, a lot of our connection has been this, but it certainly has increased. And we've just been so grateful that, you know, we have these these ways to connect to people all over the world right now. Like as much as we're separated, we're also so connected to the fact that we're so connected. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So many so many communities have, have really upped their presence in communicating through yeah. like technology to keep the connection going because we need it more than ever. So it's perfect, perfect timing to have this global connection happen. Definitely, it is, it's kind of magical um, mm -hmm. in spite of everything that's going on. So I'm curious if, if you could just tell me a little bit about the work that you do, um, and maybe give kind of a brief summary or a little bit of your own backgrounds even, because it's really interesting that you're doing this. I've, I've talked to a lot of coaches, 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 a lot of coaches <laughs> about the work they do with couples or with individuals, but I have never worked with a couple. So I'm curious about your like individual journeys that brought you together and mm -hmm. what led you to start working this way with other people. That's a great question. Mm -hmm. And it's part of why it's our passion of how we led to this place of working together. Yeah. It truly is. So, you know, we should get into the whole story, right? <laughs> yeah. Go for it. <laughs> you, you. <laughs> I mean, we had both been um, in, in our own path of recovery pretty early on in life. And so we had started, you know, in 12 step recovery and had been building and building and building our own spiritual life and doing our own work and personal development and transformation and then had been working in the fields, right, individually. And so we met in one of our many spiritual communities and um, one specifically that was really focused around healing the relationship to intimacy. And it's not where really either one of us thought probably we would meet because we were really committed to going in and, and being focused on ourselves and doing our work. And, you know, we were able to maintain that focus for a year, but we got to know each other really well because we went to three of the same, you know, meetings every single week and we we're both very vocal. So we shared a lot. And by the time we went on our first date a year later after we met, I pretty much knew his whole entire life story. He knew mine and, um, and it was really beautiful. So, you know, we were working it with others and we thought coming into this partnership that we were golden. You know, we, we just thought, oh, we've been doing so much work. We're not going to have any struggles whatsoever. This is going to be so simple. And then we were humbled greatly by how much came up in our partnership. And so through our own struggles, through our own trials, you know, we're a blended family also. That's part of the magic of us coming together. He had a daughter, I had a son, and they're literally three days apart. And so wow. they were really little when we met and we called them our, our little spiritual twins. Um, but, you know, we, we had a lot to face and we were really surprised by it. And so the years of going through our personal trials of being in partnership, even as, as two people who had a lot of awareness and consciousness and had done a lot of healing work, we understood the reality of just what partnership can bring up. And, um, you know, on the other side of it was like, oh my gosh, we, we made it out. Like we found this way, you mm -hmm. know, through this healing journey mm -hmm. and utilizing partnership as a container and as the space to actually do deeper work and work that I wouldn't have been able to do or he wouldn't have been able to do necessarily without being in relationship. And it's, you know, touches on that, that saying that is like you can't heal relational trauma mm -hmm. without being in relationship. Mm -hmm. 
right? Because that's where it all comes up. And so we definitely were confronted by a lot of that, right? Oh yeah, for <laughs> sure. For sure. I think that, that's the birth of our, of our work. And I mean, honestly, just to be more, more honest and, and vulnerable and transparent, you know, her, the story that she's saying is, is there's more to it. And I think it's important to share mm -hmm. because when we sit across couples, we really get into their lives and we share our personal darkness and, and, and what we don't share out in communities. We don't really share those real struggles in partnership. You don't hear couples really talk about the, the reality of, of the fighting, the, mm -hmm. yeah. the conflicts, the lack of communication. We keep that private, you know, what we, what we see on Facebook or Instagram or, or sharing even at dinner is oh well, everything's great you know yeah. we don't really go into the depth of, of it you know and we're there's not a lot of examples of really powerful couples who really share honestly you know and so our story is really unique you know we come from the 12-step uh, community and we both were in AA for a long time and built a foundation in recovery and then we met in like she said in a 12-step in a program that is for sex and love behaviors that's actually where we met you know and I think that's what <laughs> It's important to share that because yeah. when we sit across yeah. people, we really, we really say, "Hey, we're flawed. We're not. We're not perfect. We're mm -hmm. not coming to the table with just professional experience." Which I've been trained as a therapist. She's trained as a coach. We have so much experience collectively. Thirty years of of working with others in in the field of mental health, coaching, counseling, therapy. So we have all that. But yeah. what we have more importantly is mm -hmm. the reality of what it's like to face ourselves, face the darkness, face that the real struggle mm -hmm. of partnership. And that's what she was saying when we came together, we had thought we had worked on ourselves and we were golden. Yeah. We really thought that because we had done so much work and we, we, we reached the pinnacle of like the, the recovery in, in that SLA program. We're like, all right, we're ready. Mm -hmm. We come together and we got humbled. We got brought to our knees. Yeah to the reality of that there was so much more trauma yeah. to yeah. process out that could not be processed without being in relational issues with a partner. And so that's what we have faced. That's what we faced really early on, right away in our partnership. And mm. um, we walked through and had no guides. And, and maybe yeah. some people would have thought like, you guys shouldn't be doing this. Like it's unhealthy or hmm. there's the, the struggle is too, is, is too much. Like you guys aren't a good match, but the reality is, is this is what we teach is that we think that everybody comes together. Mm -hmm. There's a perfect pairing that happens that two people are drawn to, to one another to work out those deepest, darkest stuff. And we unconsciously pull them in to do that work. And we're not really trained how to navigate that. Right. So right. we pull in the perfect match for our traumas on a, on a level, but then because we don't know how to navigate that, we end up hurting ourselves and each other over and over and over again because we get caught in those perpetual states of trauma. Yeah. And so that was what we were faced with was, you know, I'm triggered, you're triggered. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, time traveling back to the place where I've been wounded and hurt and you're doing that. And now we're stuck in those places and we really haven't that I'm experiencing this right now. And so that loop, you know, where, where we witness pretty much every couple getting stuck, one person gets triggered. They don't really know that they're triggered, right? But then they get into that energy that triggers mm -hmm. this person. And then that trigger triggers this. And it's like trigger, 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 trigger. Poof, and now it's like this big thing that nobody really even knows how they got there. And so to be able to slow all of that down and to really say, okay, what if this partnership was my greatest teacher? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What if this partnership was actually not showing me necessarily anything about you? And it is doing that too, but what if, if at the deepest level, this was showing about me? What if this is my greatest mirror to recognize everything that I haven't seen about myself yet? And so because we didn't know, we didn't have a reference point and no one in our lives had really pulled this off or you know, we just, we just didn't have that sort of, lighthouse yeah <laughs> you yeah. know it was scary we were like in the water of just like are we, is this yeah. okay i mean i don't know and should, should we keep doing this and there was something that just kept um pulling us through this process with each other until we finally got to a space where we we really had some mastery around understanding in these moments oh i'm really triggered and this is tapping into something far greater than what is coming up in this moment 
Mm -hmm. And so what does it look like to be able to use this as, as medicine in a sense, as mm -hmm. like an opportunity for me to go deeper and to heal something that is irrelevant to this moment. And that was the, the nature of how our, our work was really birthed. Yeah. And it's unique because there are two of us, right? It's not one coach and two people. It's, mm -hmm. it's two. So. And that's that. a, we can get into that later if you have a specific questions yeah. about that, because it's, it's, it is unique and it's powerful and dynamic because we have a lot of flexibility and, yeah. and creativity to use because there's two of us. Yeah. But ultimately, it just creates a lot of balance. There's a lot of balance. There's no triangulation that can happen. It's not one person that's sitting with two and we're human so sometimes there can be sides we we don't even use that word in our in our coaching or our practice it's there are no sides it feels to me like with the two of you too you're able to really have this broader container like i can feel mm -hmm. that just in, in listening to you talk and the two of you each sharing um mm -hmm. i could see how it'd be very like pleasant and like resourceful to work with the two of you because it does feel like it's not this this narrowed focus it feels very like held but but open like there's a lot of mm -hmm. dimensionality to it mm. Mm. yeah and Beautiful. i'm i'm That's curious good. when you as you're as you're talking about when you were in those early stages and you're realizing yeah. like okay we've done all this work but like whoa relationship this is bringing up you know a whole new mm -hmm. a whole new can of worms or you know a whole new level of opportunities for growth um what are some of the things you started doing that helped you to navigate through that dark place? Like what are some, what are some awarenesses that you had or some practices or some ways of communication with each other that you started implementing in those early days to start helping you navigate through? Yeah, that's a really good question. And we didn't have them in the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. It was just why we kept making <laughs> such a mess and we kept playing out yeah. our roles that were familiar to us in our family circuses right in a mm -hmm. sense and so the first thing even and it really does extend your question into just what are our practices because these are the things that we learned through the process that now we share with other people because we went through that fire but um you know the first thing in the beginning was to to start pausing because we got our dance down right every couple has their own particular dance right this one takes this step then this one takes this step and they get really comfortable in that cycle. And so it's hard once you're wrapped in the whirlwind of it mm -hmm. to see anything differently. And so the first thing in, in any moment like that, if, if we're both triggered or um, if somebody's in the early process of this, we say, okay, pause, right? Like there's so much grace in the pause because we just have to take a minute first to really be with ourselves, to say, what is coming up and we have a five-step process that we we take people through questions that really help get to what the root is because it's important to start recognizing you know number one like just in the in the five question process Stephen, the first question is what happened you know it's like what are the facts of the mm -hmm. situation because people really collapse and i i know that you you know this the the facts and, and the perception right because you're arguing your perception, I'm arguing my perception. We think that these are the real facts and now we're just trying to get this one, you, you to agree with my facts and mm -hmm. you're trying to get me to agree with your facts and now we're fighting and we're just fighting to be right. So the first thing is to pull apart the, the facts versus the perception, like what really happened and then what's the storyline that's going on that happened so fast I didn't even catch it, right? that I am making up about what this really means, what you really said, what's really going on here. And so once I can separate those two and look at, okay, here's what happened. The facts. Versus, here's, yeah, yeah, here's what I made up about what just happened. Mm -hmm. And then looking at the reaction. So it's like, what is, what is my reaction to this experience? Because I'm in an experience in my mind and I might be in my own experience and you might be in a totally different one and yet we're in the same moment together. Mm -hmm. So looking at our reactions, I'm like, do I show up and act passive aggressively? Do I act, you know, do I lash out? Do I shut down? What are the things that I do when I'm feeling this way about what's happening? And then we start looking at the feelings underneath, like what, what am I feeling underneath that reaction? Do I feel scared? Do I feel lonely? Do I feel shame? Do I feel, you know, so we really start connecting to more of the emotional state of what's going on underneath the reaction and then we'll look at okay and so where have we felt this before 
-hmm. And that's really the goal because if we can slow down this process that in the beginning when people are just in their pattern, it, it happens so fast. So the first thing is like, if we can get any pause in there, that's the gift. And then if each person can start just slowing it down and looking at what happened to them and going through that process, ultimately we want to get to the place where somebody can connect to the place where the original wound was. Yeah. It's beautiful. It is a yeah. lot. And I, we, we get that. And that takes, yeah. we usually work with people no less than three months <laughs> mm -hmm. and it takes a while to, to actually implement that work. But yeah, overall, like I would summarize like what we, generally teaches is awareness awareness of 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 that that what that what she was talking about just even how to even see all that exactly and it's so tricky yeah and then we and then we focus on implementing a new belief system which is hard because we have to undo beliefs so we have to actually uncover what their beliefs are about relationships yep. and all that so that's why we call ourselves conscious partnership because we're trying to bring all the unconscious patterns of behavior unconscious beliefs, unconscious conditioning into the front of the mind, into the conscious awareness so that, so that you can separate basically that, that process, the, mm. the fact from the fiction, the storytelling, the storytelling that could be generations of storytelling from your lineage. And then the last part is really, this is why we're coaches, but it's alchemy really because we're, we're transmuting mm. something, right? But the mm. coaching part is, then we actually get in the relationship where we coach them how to how to share yeah. from a very very powerful powerful place, mm -hmm. so that they're not stuck in story. And what happens when we when we do that magic? What what uh, what happens is there's no defensiveness. The other person can receive what the what the other person is sharing about, yeah. and they don't feel like they're being attacked. And that's where intimacy can be built. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Are you familiar with the Mago therapy at all? Yeah. Yes. And, yeah. and people yeah. come in, they're like, oh, this is kind of like that. And it's interesting because we didn't really know anything about it. It mm -hmm. was something that was yeah. really just, we were, it was like coming through us. Right. And so, yeah. um, but we do now know about it. We've heard many times like, oh, this, this feels a little bit like that. It sounds like yeah. there's similar threads is why I, is why I yeah. ask. Um, yeah. And it's beautiful yeah. work. I love everything you're saying. I think you know, and my, my partner and I have been doing Imago therapy and it's, I think being able to like slow things down, like you said, and then really be yeah. like, here's, even after listening to a Brene Brown talk, I, I've started implementing this yeah. thing of like, let's tell each other what, when we're heated, like what story, like, here's what I'm making up about this. Yes. Um, yeah. And it yeah. really does. It just kind of pauses everything. And then we're able to be like, oh, oh, is this even real? And you know, right. how are we feeling behind this? And it, it definitely helps the communication. Yeah. Um, but I love, I mean, the way that you guys described your work is so eloquent, eloquent, and I can't talk this morning. And so it's beautiful on so many layers. It mm -hmm. sounds like it's just this, let's just start here. And then how can we slowly deepen and deepen yes. and, and bring some of these behaviors in? And I can see the need for having support for a period of at least three months yeah. because it's difficult to get to those places in us that are so raw and vulnerable, mm -hmm. you know, that these wounds that were inflicted, maybe when we're these very small children and it's like something yes. we, that's always been part of our, our physiological makeup. So to exactly. like unwind that in the vulnerability with the partner, yes. it's, um, it's incredible work. It's so needed mm -hmm. and it's, it's can be really scary for people. It's so terrifying. It was the scariest thing I've ever done in my whole life. So yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, mm -hmm. and that's why it gets to be gentle but it's powerful, but it's also gentle and it gets to be organic because when we're dealing with, you know, touching on places that hold trauma, you know, the mind is really powerful. The mind has been set up from early on to do two things and that's stay alive and to protect ourselves and keep us out of pain, right? So we're talking about really intricate systems that have been built and put in place and all of that armor. And so it, it has to be a, a process. It can't just be like, come in and we're going to you know, rip this all apart and then, mm -hmm. you know, t share differently with each other. It's like, no, we really have to take, take that time to see what, what that is. Because if just in one moment we can connect to that place, that, that pain that's been stored in our body, right. And we can use this moment of being triggered to do some of that work, just one piece at a time, what happens is we start to release that, whether it's through crying, whether it's through, you know, going outside and like raging, screaming in pillows, like we really get the opportunity to start to unleash and unlock some of that energy that has been stored in us. And 
because we didn't have anywhere to process any of it. Yeah, let me let me add to that because what we see in in partnership is we actually see that that healing process happen between the partners. So when they have a witness, their partner is yes. a witness to mm -hmm. that deep wound. They they feel healed, they feel held, they yeah. feel loved, and so that changes the the dynamic for them to let go of a story, let go of a belief, right? Because they're having a different experience. So there's a rewiring happening yeah. right there in that moment. It's Absolutely. So and it's, I mean, I work a lot. Hang on one second. Yeah. Do you feel like talking about, and I was going to say something else, but that was so sweet. Do you feel like talking about and practicing this work continues to just deepen your own connection? Oh, I imagine yeah. it, it oh, must. Yeah. Oh yeah. And it's never done. You know, right. life, life shows up this, this situation, right? Because it's not just conscious partnership with, with a partner. It's conscious <laughs> partnership with self, with spirit, whatever that means for anyone conscious partnership with our children, mm -hmm. with our families, if that's possible, but we still get to be in conscious partnership with ourselves in relationship to our families, even if that's not available on the other side. Conscious relationship to this coronavirus and what's happening on the planet, like mm -hmm. it, it really is about being consciously connected and, you know, getting the, that our work really isn't done. And I think that that part was a little bit tricky for me because even getting sober, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, a long, long time ago, I thought, okay, I'm going to work these steps and then like be done. I'll be right? fixed. <laughs> yeah. And that uh, illusion <laughs> has, you know, felt defeating many times because, and, and I would say, it, you know, oh, the work is never done. But then I'd always kind of be surprised that something else showed up. <laughs> and so it took me a while to really embody that as, as a reality, not just at the concept. So the work really is never done. You know, we, we still get opportunities in, in our parenting and, stuff that might come up in our partnership, but the practice and the mastery around being able to really be responsible and to know, first of all, oh, I, I am triggered right now, right? Mm -hmm. Which tells me that it's not about just this situation. Yeah. So that's like that. That's, that's hardwired. Me, that's, now. yeah, that's it's in hardwired, there. Yeah. And so I'll have moments and, and I, I, I joke with our clients because, you know, I've had moments where we teach this. So I know it, <laughs> but there are moments still where my mind wants to make it about him. So mm -hmm. I, the best thing I could say in that is I really know that it's not you, but I really feel like it is right now. Mm -hmm. So I've got to go just take a moment to see what this is really about and what's coming up. And what we see is that relationships can be just as um, distracting as even drinking or this or that people no, use yeah. their arguments yeah. as a way to dissociate and not feel whatever that wound is, whatever the pain is. Absolutely. Staying, yeah. Yeah. Staying stuck in the story, whatever yeah. it is, doesn't even matter. Mm -hmm. So they can create yes. their, whatever dance that is. So they take a step and that step is the distraction. And then the other person takes a step and it's their distraction right. and they can get lost in that loop. What we come across every, almost every couple, they come to us and they, we have communication breakdowns. We, yeah. And then we get into it and they, they, every couple has a very similar process where they get looped in a, a, a type of argument or a process that doesn't, doesn't, doesn't transform it. It just, mm -hmm. they come back to that same way of communicating yep. or relating to one another. And, you know, that's, that's really something that we try to begin to unhook is that, is that process first, because that, if they can't get out of that, then right then they'll never move beyond like dropping deeper into what story they have, they're carrying, what traumas, what beliefs, what conditioning. And a lot of times couples don't even, or a person doesn't even know what they're carrying because they can be carrying a story from their parents that wasn't necessarily, it's not like a trauma, mm -hmm. but it's a story. It's a belief. It's a condition. And they just think it's somewhat normal or they don't, they don't really question it that's that's where the power lies and that's what is that's what we do is create a, a new belief system around how do you pull that into your conscious awareness so you can see it playing out and we're that's what we got really masterful at is doing that specific thing because we do it every day we, this is something we practice every day yeah. what because there's so many layers of our conditioning you know <clears throat> i mean i really believe in like the book the four agreements where it talks about we come in 
and we make all these we have all these agreements that were established way before us we come in a world where there's all these agreements right now we're we're challenging even all these agreements in these systems right now by the coronavirus right so we have layers upon layers upon layers that are societal that are cultural that are familial there there are so many there and like that's the that's what my journey is my journey personally is to remove those strips and the layers of of how I function in the world, how I see mm-hmm. myself, how I see myself relating to the world. There's a lot. So we, you know, it just depends on how deep someone wants to go yeah. in the yeah. process of alchemy. Yep. Definitely. Cause there's these lines of, you know, generational trauma and then also societal, yes. I think these patterns, mm-hmm. you know, we can look at it from like the, the anime, the animagus, um, those archetypes of like the man and the woman are like, what do we come into? with like, this is the role of a woman in society. Yes, and yeah. like, here's oh, yeah. how we're oh, yeah. supposed to be, or it's either this or this, or <clears throat> excuse me, I see these really big swings of it's either this way or it's this way. And yeah. I think to begin to just pull at that thread a little bit and ask, well, you know, yeah. really what is this for me as an individual or what is it yes. for this person as an individual? And to be able right. to start just unwinding some of those some of those traumatic patterns. Yes. Um, and, and I was gonna- so right. Yeah, because it, it's it's real and it's really interesting to 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 be able to pause and take a look at them, and just yes. to notice like, oh, is this even me? Like, is this even my belief or my thought? Like, mm-hmm. or is this something that has been programmed into me, like through my family lineage or through, yeah. um, you know, something bigger through a cultural lineage? Yes. But to just be yes, able to pause yes, yes. and to do that in relationship, it's mm-hmm. I think anytime you got the this container or the dynamic of two people, it's like your exploding it by 10, the work you're going to mm-hmm. do. And maybe explode isn't the right word. Maybe deepening is a better word. <laughs> it's going to be maybe intensified. Both. Yeah, maybe both. It is really both, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. um, it, sometimes it's so much easier. I'll have the thought. I was in Kauai a few weeks ago walking with a girlfriend who we haven't seen each other in like 20 years. And now she's married and has a baby and we're talking about relationships. And I'm saying, you know, sometimes I think it'd just be so much easier to be single and she quite simply is like, yes, but relationships are where we grow. And I was like, oh, that's the thing. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> I was like, you're right. I'm gonna, I think it's true. Um, <laughs> so right now with everybody, you know, we've mentioned coronavirus a few times. And with people in these change dynamics and people are in, you know, quarantine together, couples or family structures, I'm curious if you have any advice or or tools or just gentle things that people could bring into their awareness or into their daily lives and practices to help to help with this this new new dynamic that we're all facing yeah absolutely Mm -hmm. and we have so much compassion for what is getting kicked up for for everybody and we've seen that it really is Mm. you know a different situation for everyone whether it's somebody's threat of I'm really concerned for my health or somebody I love, right? Or I'm really concerned for my business crumbling, or I've never been home with my family 24 hours a day. And while maybe it seemed like a good idea, it's really hard in Mm -hmm. in actuality. (laughs) And, um, you know, so there's just so many things on so many levels that people are facing. And then there's the collective experience that we're all in this together and we really are all connected and I think that we're getting that on a much deeper level than ever before and energetically we're all connected and you know we've been connecting ourselves to you know we we kind of unplugged a lot from these ways of of living in a sense you know a couple years ago we we did some radical shifting and left Los Angeles and moved out of our three bedroom house and gave away all of our stuff into a tiny house bus and like Mm -hmm. self quarantined ourselves in a sense for about six months that we traveled and started homeschooling our kids. So we went through a lot of like the letting go of financial security, letting go of, um, you know, taking the kids, like our, our routines and our patterns. Mm -hmm. But what we are still connected to in this process is um, a way deeper opportunity to grieve. Both of us have had moments of like, wow, there's just deeper grieving that wants to to come through in this, you know? And it's no coincidence, I think, that this is connected to the respiratory, right? This Mm -hmm. coronavirus is respiratory. And on the planet, we have not so much been trying to grieve, right? So a lot of us are holding and storing so much of that, and, and it's all like in the lungs, and so we, we are connected to just our, our work in this. So everybody's in a different space around it all. Mm-hmm. And um, wherever you are, 
just, you know, the gentleness, the love, the compassion, just slowing down and breathing, like breathing, remember to breathe and what we are doing for ourselves and just in seeing too is the importance of really having a practice, right? Like a practice mm -hmm. that is in the morning, whether it's breath work, whether it's meditation, whether it's prayer, whether it's a combination of all of those things, but the importance of grounding in and connecting to something bigger than the mind. Mm. Because whether it's the individual mind or the collective mind, the mind right now is really susceptible to a lot of fear. Yeah. And so that isn't um, on the highest level going to help any of us, right? During this time is to not to say that we can't feel afraid because there gets to be room for all of our humanity. And that's really important too, to not bypass all of that and to not get wrapped in the loop where I'm in a constant state of panic, right? Because that will just affect my immune system and all, all kinds of other things. So being able to slow down and really connect to a practice is first and foremost, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. I, I know I need that for myself. I yeah. do that every day and I have to do it. And it's not, I get to do it. It's something that I enjoy. It's my favorite part of the day. <laughs> Without it, I, I know I can't really function as at my best. Mm -hmm. But, you know, to, to really connect to what you're asking, because everyone's being triggered right now in some way or another, because yeah. our sense of security is being threatened mm -hmm. in one way or another like she was saying everyone has a different story about that because right. we all have different traumas we all have different unprocessed things that we need to look at so what we, what we see this as is something that we see in every relationship anyways which is which is a mirror a mirror is being presented to us that's how that is my deep deep belief that everything is a mirror for me to see and reflect back to me about myself so if I have an anxiety about something um, outside of the outside in the world, it's just reflecting something about myself. And that's that that work that we're talking about. That's one of the things that we deeply believe in as a practice is that we did it in partnership, but we do it with every every part a partnership to everything. So what we would say is really take this time and opportunity to look at what is the mirror showing you? Like what is being reflected back to you? What is your anxiety? What is your fear? What is your, your sadness? What, what is being shown? And then the other thing is if you are in partnership, which is a beautiful thing to be in, like you said, it, it, it's, a, it's an opportunity to grow. We really definitely deeply believe that. Um, we suggest a very simple practice, you know, is to sit down, spend some actual quality time sitting down, not just sitting down and talking, but taking a moment to look at each other in the eyes, like in silence for a few minutes mm -hmm. trying that practice mm -hmm. or turn to each other hold each other's hands you know and really just like look at each other and communicate and decide to communicate in this way like not where we're sitting across the couch from each other and we're on our phones and we're talking but like literally sit with each other look at each other in the eyes hold it turn to each other hold each other's hands and then begin a conversation and just share whatever you, you feel like sharing about yourself not about the partner because mm -hmm. that's where we can get trapped yeah. up in the cycle but <clears throat> just share what's what's going on like if this is kicking something up <clears throat> this coronavirus share about it yeah but do it in that in that kind of more of a sacred sacred mm -hmm. container where you're holding each other's hands and it's just a different different way of uh, relating yeah and and really just ultimately all the things slowing down you know mm -hmm. taking this time as, as the gift that it that it can be for us to slow down like that because life can be so busy we're so busy as, as a culture time. right mm -hmm. so to just and we can be so busy even in all of this like with, with oh, the yeah. bones and you know all the things so if we can really actually slow down and connect to ourselves and connect to each other and and meeting ourselves where where we're at because maybe for some people that's not hard but maybe for some people they haven't actually stopped and looked at each other in that way in 10 years i mean there's you know so wherever you are take just just notice that and be willing to go a little bit outside of your comfort zone right into okay so what does it really look like to slow down a little bit more for me what does it look like to be a little bit more intimate and i don't mean physically but e even just emotionally intimate you know can i share with my partner what is coming up for me am i feeling scared am i feeling sad am i having a hard time with this um and also connecting to nature and i know that a lot of beaches and, and state parks and everything are being shut down but even just literally grass, 
yeah. like taking your shoes off okay. and putting your feet on the grass, you know, connecting to the trees, anything that can help our system to regulate and to come back into harmony with our planet because there's so much wisdom that she is all the time offering us and we're too busy to hear it. And so she's getting louder, you know, and, and she really loves us and wants us to listen. And this is time. This is time for us to slow down, listen to ourselves, listen to her, listen mm -hmm. to each other, listen to our kids, um, really spending some quality time with each other. And more than anything, this is the time to go in. This is really the time to go in. So if there's been a calling for you to do some, some work on yourself, this is a perfect time. You know, this really is. We... We are working with people and they're like, thank you so much. I feel like working with you prepared us for this because we know now what to do with ourselves in this situation. And even people who are starting now, it's like the intuition that they had to, to say yes, right? Before any of this was happening. It's like, listen to that inner thing. And, and um, it's just time to do some deeper inner work. Yeah. It's yeah. like been handed to us on a platter really of like, yeah. Oh, maybe go within now. And right. Mm -hmm. I see some of the, the, some of my clients and the people I work with are really struggling with wanting to, to continue to structure their lives very busy because I think yes. that's like their coping mechanism and that makes right. them feel okay about it. And I think if anyone listening, if that's something you relate to, you know, to go off what you said, just to really pull even small amounts of time just a little bit more than usual to like yes. go sit in your backyard if you have one or take a walk up the street and stare at a tree yes. or open a window and listen to the birds and let your eyes wander a minute. Just mm. anything to come back into yourself a little more. I, I agree. It's so, it's so important all the time because as a society, yeah. we don't value those things. Um, no. And it's so important for like it's how we can go through life as a human and actually be, feel, feel good in our bodies and walk around behind our eyes and feeling three-dimensional and feeling present all of the time or 99% yes. of the time. So it's, I mean, I, I think it's kind of neat that this has been thrust upon us and yeah, um, it's wonderful that you're doing the work that you do and you, mm. and I love what you said about people feel like they're, they're prepared because of working with you. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Thank you for saying that. And I, mm -hmm. I want to just um, say something to that because what you were speaking about earlier about even just the collective experience of the roles, right? Between male and female, let's say, or just even the masculine and feminine energies that we all embody. So just because we're women doesn't mean that we're only representing the feminine, right? Mm -hmm. But there is an imbalance and there is a collective trauma around those energies that has been playing out for thousands of years, right? So it's one of those things that um, right now in this slowing down, because our whole culture is run on this overly masculine, doing, mm -hmm. taking action, analyzing logic structure, right? And so that's part of the imbalance. And it's the imbalance on the collective, but it's also the imbalance in partnership. And so this is, you know, we, we say like, ah, I just want to experience this balance here. But are we actually living in balance in the way that we want to experience in our partnership? So it really is an opportunity to see, because I'm, I'm somebody who can be in workaholism or mm -hmm. busy or doing. And, you know, even this, it's like, I get to slow down even more and to recognize that part in me that wants to, you know, run in that way and to balance those energies within myself first. And when I do that inside myself, because the slowing down and the resting and the allowing is all the feminine. And we as a whole don't feel safe in that. Mm -hmm. As women, we don't feel safe in it. <clears throat> and men don't feel like, we just don't feel like we're going to be taken care of if we're not producing something, yeah. right? And that's a really deep program that has been instilled in us. And so for us to recognize, wow, even when I want to slow down, I can't, mm -hmm. you know, and again, bringing compassion because shame is not going to help us move along anywhere, but to, to recognize and to say, okay, so I can, I can bring some of that balance, some of that slowing down, some of that resting because there's so much power in that, but we've just been taught to just go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm so glad you said that. I could really, that really resonates of just, it is, it's almost, mm -hmm. 
painful sometimes to give into yeah. it because there, it brings up, at least for me, I can feel, I'm just kind of tracking my own system. I can feel my body, like almost be a little bit like, yeah, but I can't stop because then, yeah. you know, and then there goes the story. So I think that's true yeah. for what happens with a lot of us. And, mm -hmm. and this is, you know, right now the screws are turning a little bit on that. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm curious, I wanted to ask you both as well, because I know you talked a lot about doing your own work and um, obviously you had done a lot. And I, I think there's this concept around relationships that for, for it to be like really healthy and to come into it good, like we need to do a whole bunch of our own work. And I'm wondering if you could just speak to like, when is that enough? I know back <laughs> in my twenties, I was very much like, I have to do like all this personal growth and then, and then I'll get into a relationship. And um you know, certainly I continue to do my own personal growth, but I, I also have this other view of like, oh, the relationship is going to just edge that along. Um, so mm -hmm. do you like, is there, I mean, I know there's no clear line in the sand of like, you've done enough work, go be in a relationship. Um, <laughs> but I'm curious if you could speak to that of when, uh, if, if somebody, for someone who is wanting to be in a relationship um, or wanting to like pull that in, what are some things they could maybe do to check in with themselves around that first or to know that, oh, this is an okay time to pursue that? Um, things along those lines. <laughs> I love that question. Um, I love that question because when we sit across a couple, we start with really letting them know we have no, um, uh, like we have no expectation of whether your 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 partnership to, should be this way, should it end, should it transform into something better. We have we don't have any attachment to that because we don't know why two people come together. Mm. You know, why two people come together is for them to sort out. So like we've come across people who come together and we help them, you know, end their relationship or, or recreate one or they come because they, they're about to get married and they want to strengthen a creative, powerful foundation. So we've seen it all. And our perspective has always been, you know, your you've pulled this person in if you're like seeking a partnership you're then you're pulling somebody in to be a mirror for you to see stuff for yourself like because that's just ultimately what it's about you know and that could be at so many different levels you can pull somebody in to to show you what you don't what you don't want in yourself and mm -hmm. what you don't want in a partner and that's what their gift is for, for you and then the relationship's over or you pull somebody in and you think you're ready and you realize like, oh, wow, I have so much more work to do. And I thought I did work on myself. And then you're pulled into deeper personal work, you know? And so, or sometimes you get into a relationship and you, you're, you know, there's traumas that need to be worked out that, that like say sexual traumas, like intimacy issues that you can't do by yourself because you need the partner to have that be triggered. So I, mm -hmm. I just, we don't have a, an, um, any, any judgment of like, when people should come together and why because yeah. we ultimately know that if two people have come together and they're in a relationship it's for a deep purpose you know that's that's how we, we our, our real tagline is relationships on purpose you know mm -hmm. and there's no black and white recipe right there's no black and white recipe for that and then there's also no um, black and white recipe for like okay so when you hit this point in your own work right and that is going to be the day mm -hmm. that you should get into a relationship <laughs> and so there's not like, a checklist <laughs> that you know i don't I, I can see that um sometimes there's this thing of like i've got to get it all worked out and be perfect before i can even get to that place and there's no such thing right there's no such place where we're going to get and we've done the exact amount of work and now so I think it's so different for everybody. Everybody's path, everybody's journey is so different. And I think it's really learning about how to trust ourselves at a certain point. And it's that thing about intuitively knowing how to handle situations that used to baffle us. So mm. I've, done, I've done some work. I have a conscious relationship with myself. You know, and so now who am I being when it comes to the idea of being in a relationship? Am I avoiding it because I'm scared and I want to just keep only working on myself and, and it would actually serve me to step outside of that and to maybe date and to explore that? Or do I really need to keep working on myself? So I think it's really um, the capacity to be honest with self, right? Mm -hmm. Of is this, you know, is this the time for me? Is this the person for me? And trusting, you know, because it is taking a risk. That's the thing. Oh, it's yeah. like 
intimacy and vulnerability feel super risky because mm -hmm. on some level they are. So, you know, um, just knowing ourselves, I think, at the, at, at, as much as possible will help us to navigate, okay, is it time? Is this the person right now that I'm meant to be, you know, getting yeah. to know in this wow. way? And, or am I hiding in my work? So I think it's just who, who will be, right? I, yeah, I just want to add, like, I think our, our partnership is actually a perfect example of you just can't judge when you think you're ready or not ready because we really thought we were ready. <laughs> And I, when I say we were humbled, at least for me, I was humbled because it was the hardest relationship I had ever been in. Yeah. So how do you, wow. how does your mind wrap around that? If you, if, if you see things as black and white, like she started with saying, right? Like, it, cause then you would, you would think like, how is this even possible? Then you would probably want to end it. If you were really black and white, a thinker, you would say, I put in all this work. So this relationship shouldn't look this way. So I'm going to leave. That's what black and white thinking would do, right? Like, but that's not what was called to us. Something deeper was called to like, no, I think we're supposed to work something out and we're going to keep working it out until we don't work it out or we do work it out. You know, I, we didn't have any, there was so much gray in that. So I, I think our relationship is a perfect example of there's just no, we, we look at things in, in such duality, you know, it was like, yeah. it has to be one way or another. And I just really want to share, like our story is that we did all this work <laughs> And then we came in and it was the most challenging relationship ever. So, yeah. and people were saying, you know, we, you guys shouldn't date. This is not this is frowned upon, right? That people in this community would date each other. Mm -hmm. And so going up against even the opinions of others. And so it's like, I, I really do believe at the deepest level. And I know we both have this belief that, that we have our answers. Yeah. yeah. You know, we really do. They're, they're inside of ourselves. We are our own gurus, as you would say, right? Mm -hmm. So hundred um, percent connecting and, and, and really leaning into that, you know, because I don't think it's going to be the same journey for everybody. In fact, I know it, it won't be. So if you're attracted to somebody and <laughs> it's drawn, you guys are both drawn to one another and you yeah. guys are engaging in a relationship, then don't judge it. There, it's a per there's a purpose behind mm -hmm. it, you know, and you don't have to figure it all out. Let it unfold. It might be painful. I'm not going to say it's not, but if you're, if it, it's there, if there's that attraction, there's a reason and just go with it. It's like, that's where the deeper personal work is necessary because you're going to have to weather whatever is going to be shown to you. Yeah. Um, and I think barring any kind of really obscene behaviors and physical and mental abuse and things like that, just to point that Always, out. But yeah, I, yeah, yeah I, yes. I feel like, of course. Um, yes. And I, I love the, I love everything you both said. And I, I want to just touch on this connection with self and being able to like deepen and feel this self-trust um, because I think that's a huge component in all communities and, you know, definitely in the sober community as well, but building this self-trust and ability to really regulate and to, and to know like, Oh, this is, this is what I'm choosing or this is a, a partnership that I want to get in or with anything in our lives. Like this is the color shirt I want to wear today. Even mm -hmm. of, is this really resonant of who I am inside yeah. And I'm, I'm curious if you could share anything that helped for you to build that self-trust or anything that you advise your, your patients or your, um, your clients that you work with of, of things to start building self-trust and, and that ability to rely on oneself. And I know that's a, a very broad topic, but just if there's one or two yeah. things that you have found particularly helpful for you or for your clients. Um, yeah, you know, I actually want to start with that because it's, this is a good question to kind of share how we how we operate a little bit more in detail mm -hmm. so because there's the two of us we we don't believe it's just um yeah. the couple that we that is important work it's the individual work that's really important so we have a beautiful blend of one week we meet as as a group the four of us um and we do that that couple's work and then the next week we split up and we do individual work i, I meet with the men she meets with the women and then we dive in and do and doing that exactly what mm. you're talking about. Whatever, whatever the individual needs to process or build upon or strengthen, that's where we do that work. Because it's really important to have both. And so this is what we have found. And especially what I have found like working working with people is that there's before us, is that like I would work with a couple and you would see a couple and then sometimes they would have their own individual therapist, or mm -hmm. I would I would, I would work with an individual and they were married and the other person has a, a therapist or a counselor and then they go see another. So there could be technically three different, you know, therapists or helpers, supporters, and it's all disjointed. 
And so what we really believe is like, it's, it's all of it is integrated. So we take whatever is being processed in individual sessions and bring it into the group if they're ready to process that. And then what's processed in the group, we take it back to the individual. So it's, it just builds upon. And so that question is a big one. That's actually why we created, why we created what we do in this way, because it's powerful to have your own individual process. This is why people go and get individual therapy or counseling or coaching. Mm -hmm. But it's really powerful if you're a couple and you're seeking support that you get all of that. Yeah. And yeah. so we just, it's all in-house. We have the luxury and the ability to do that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, learning how to trust ourselves is such a journey, right? Like you said, it's so broad. And there have been so many things just in our own individual practice and process that we have learned from of, you know, a lot of times for me, it was like, I would get intuition and then not listen to it mm -hmm. <laughs> and do something else and be like, oh, okay, that's why I got that message. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times for me, learning how to trust my intuition showed up by not trusting my intuition, you know, and just having to, to learn how to be gentle with myself about that. Because one of my biggest things that kept me away from myself was my addiction to shame, mm -hmm. you know, above all the addictions to alcohol and this and men and all the things that came later the first one was my, my relationship to shame. And I did not know how, how deep that ran. And so healing my relationship to shame was one of the necessary components for me to be able to trust myself because I was trusting that voice that was not my self self. Right. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it's like getting going within, but sometimes it's like having to deal with what's, what's blocking that or standing in the way of it. And so for me, it's like, that has been my deepest thing to heal and release is my relationship to shame. Because if that's not there, then, then I have an easier time connecting and hearing my truth and myself and, and knowing what that is. And it has required for me to slow down and, and take that time to get to know myself and to, like we were speaking about earlier, you know, is this me? Like, is what I'm thinking or what I'm believing right now, even because I chose this or mm -hmm. did it come from here or there? And so knowing and just having to be honest with the reality that most of us have lived a totally unconscious life for the majority of the time and, and just being really real about that. And then yeah. understanding from that place that it takes time to pull all these things that are unconscious into conscious awareness and then to choose like, yes, is this, is this what I really believe or is this somebody else's that I'm, I'm not ready to let go of. And so Again, it's, it's a unique journey for everybody, but in my experience, it's been more about letting go of things than it mm. has been about like getting anything in terms of that ability to really listen to self. It's almost like you're clearing the channels so that you yes. can hear yourself. Exactly. And the truth is, is that we're all living in a world where mistrust is a part of our experience. Yeah. I mean, it, we just are. So yeah. the, the, the acceptance that we're all in it together. Yeah that we have many experiences and generations of not trusting people in the world and we've had we've been harmed mm -hmm. by by each other that the more that we face that yeah. the more that we're going to tr have begin trusting in self and then something greater than ourselves and then then humanity and other people and i think that's what part of this coronavirus is showing us as well yeah. is like we're all in this together which you said you know earlier this is the first time in our history that we have something so global that mm -hmm. is connecting us mm -hmm. in a deep, deep way. And that's on purpose. I believe, you know, that part is on purpose for us to begin to sh reshape how we, how we treat one another, even how we're treating the planet, like by us not moving around on the planet so much, the, the earth is coming back into balance so quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And people are really having like a visual of that. And it's rewiring like, yeah. oh, wow, we have that much of an impact yeah. on our planet and on each other. Right. This is going to, this is hopefully, you know, my hope is that it's really going to shift so many ways that we live. Mm -hmm. And then three generations from now, you know, or like, like the Native Americans believe they made decisions in their councils. They looked seven generations ahead and mm -hmm. thought, how is it going to impact them? That is what we need. You know, we're going to be building from seven generations now, hopefully, to see how is it going to impact. Mm -hmm. Because we've had many more generations that have just destroyed our our connection and created a lot of this insecurity and not feeling safe in the, in the world. Yeah, it's beautiful. I love that you brought up the seven generations. Mm -hmm. So important. 
Thank you both so much for coming on today. Um, before we close, is there are there any um, services or anything that you have going on right now that you'd like to talk about or promote or where can people find you if they want to hear more from you? Mm, yeah, thank you for asking. Yeah. Of course. We um, Our website is kellyandrudy.com. So it's really simple and easy. And I'll, I'll, li I'll link everything you say too. So if anyone's yeah. listening, don't worry. It'll be in the show notes, but definitely tell us Amazing. too. Yes. And, um, you know, we are full in this moment with our individual practice and have a couple of spaces opening up in April. Um, we are also launching more group programs because we've seen that, you know, working in a group space, uh, as maybe vulnerable as that could be for somebody who hasn't done it, it's so powerful. And we've taken people through our whole three month, you know, individual process. And then they go to one of our workshops for one day and watch other couples doing the work. And it's like all of the information mm. sort of just goes in and they get it on a really deep level because being in that synergistic space and doing this work with each other is really potent. And what might take a couple, three months on their own, or, or six months on their own can get done in three months, right, on, on that group level. So um, we're launching a, a group coaching program April 4th, and then we'll launch another one shortly after that because we really want to support as many couples as possible. And Yeah, we find, we find as many ways as we can yeah. to, to influence couples and people who are, we put on, we, uh, this is probably not going to happen for a little while just because yeah. of the way things look, but we like to do one-day workshops as well for couples and for, for singles, you know, that, that are looking to see what, what it looks like in relationships. So mm -hmm. we do everything possible to connect uh, um, to our work to people. So yeah. it'll look like individual uh, group coaching. Um, I mean, individual coaching, our group coaching process online and in person. So we just, we find every way possible to connect. Yep. And, and training other people to do our work. Oh, so yes, that's, that's an exciting. Also coming very soon because we, again, we just want to extend the ripple and, you know, really support as many relationships as possible. Because I think that if we can really get this work in terms of sacred union and what that's about and how to navigate it, that it will be a huge change just in, in the way that we live on the planet. You know, there's something really powerful about a couple that is doing that work and, yeah. and clearing that out. That's right. And we do international retreats. So, you know, maybe not this year. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> See what happens. A little up in the air. Yeah. Uh, but we're really doing our best to make ourselves as available as possible. And so most of that you'll find on our website. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. That's great. You have yeah. so many avenues for people to find you and work with you. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. You're doing such thank wonderful you. work. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so yeah. much. And thank you for this beautiful conversation and just everything that you asked and shared and uh, it was really, really, really beautiful to, to be with you this morning. So thank you. Yeah. Likewise. Thank you. For, yeah. Thank you for what you do for so many people and yeah. spreading so much information and connecting and having a space for people to come and, and receive. So mm -hmm. thank you for your work. Yes. Yeah. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm.